Amo, we are now at DD Payroll Services. Can you explain what this is and how it links into the Disability Direct Charity model? So DD Payroll Services um, does what it says on the tin. Uh, it's payroll, but primarily uh, supporting disabled people who employ their own carers. And at the moment, we have just over 2,000 disabled people across the whole of the country. Uh, we work with 45 local authorities. Um, and we provide payroll for them who um, and get rid of the headache around uh, HMRC and uh, tax and, and, and pensions etc for the staff we deal with all that Then we also have a, a separate section which is just as busy uh, called the managed account section where we look after client money because uh, a lot of disabled people said we don't want to physically hold that for cash ourselves that comes from the local authority so we hold it at any one time, we've got around £8 million sitting in the account, which doesn't belong to us, unfortunately, um, but we handle it for on, on their behalf. Um, so, so yeah, there's, it's, um, it's, uh, I'm really proud of DD Payroll. It was the very first venture into business activity that I did. It didn't take a lot of persuading to the board of trustees at Disability Direct because they shared the feeling that I had uh, well, I say they did, but the bulk of them shared uh, the feeling that I had that grants were going to disappear at some stage um, and that charities need to be self-sufficient. So this was our first um, uh, step into that arena. 2004, we started, but officially started trading 2007. Uh, so as I say, we've got, we started off with about a dozen clients and it, it rapidly grew without any marketing and I say now we have just over 2,000, which brings around, I think the turnover of payrolls around 650,000 a year, of which about 150,000 is profit, and it comes back into the charity, which uh, funds things that nobody else wants to fund. So I'm really pleased with that. So where did this idea come from? Why payroll and, <laughs> and this idea of income generation to sustain the charity? I looked at the 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 charity and what we were doing and I recognized nationally that um, accountants were charging an arm and a leg uh, to disabled people to do their payroll and I thought well hang on something's not right here and we had the client group who needed payroll mm -hmm. so we thought well we'll, we'll do it ourselves and um, I instructed one of the staff I said look uh, they had a bit of background in in this area I said, what does it take to do payroll they ran a few payrolls off in front of me and I thought, well, either that's too easy <laughs> and people are being ripped off or I'm missing something. And, and in all honesty, it wasn't a lot of work. Before we realised it, we started doing payroll and I thought, well, we can charge for this. And we, we, were, um, we were charging, a, 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 I think it was £6 for a payroll run back in 2007 and we were actually making money on that. <laughs> and and you know, some accountants were charging... Uh, something like I think it's about a hundred pound a month, which I thought somebody's getting ripped off here. And when it's disabled people getting ripped off, that's where I thought we need to do something. Mm -hmm. I'm really chuffed that the model that we adopted when starting to charge for payroll, it got replicated, and so up and down the country now there are similar organisations to the one that I work for that uh, follow our model and, and charge for payroll. Mm -hmm. Quite rightly so. Competition's good for us. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to do everything. Um, but uh, it, it basically shows that disabled people's organisations can do it for themselves. And I'm really pleased that we were the pioneers there. And I can see you're lifting a lot of weight off um, people's shoulders, uh, whether it's disabled people or parents and carers for young disabled people, managing those budgets and employing someone as a carer yeah. or, or personal assisting. It's becoming an employer is quite a lot to take care of. What kind of feedback do you get from people who, who use this service? A lot of compliments, a lot of thank yous. The thing to understand is when disabled people are accessing social care, a lot of times they're already at crisis point. And for us to say, well, we can take some of that weight off you. Mm -hmm. So somebody will go through the doors of the council and they'll be assessed and they need some personal assistance, some carers. Then say, well, you've got to employ someone. The first thing a lot of people say, well, hang on, I don't want that responsibility. I don't know anything about HMRC mm -hmm. rules and tax and guidelines and, and pensions and such, et cetera. I've got a set of staff out there now who are fully qualified uh, and experienced to be able to do that at a, at a very nominal charge. Um, and, we, we, and, the, and the great thing is, ethically, people will fund, come to us because they know that any profits we make will go back into a support service which nobody wants to fund. 
So, so yeah, people um, are, are quite are pleased that we can we can do that for them, and their money is going to a, a good cause at the same time. And what's your role coming here as CEO? What kind of involvement or input do you have into this part of the business? You want the honest truth? Yeah. Very little. <laughs> um, I come in and I just I, I just want to make sure everyone's happy and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. I very rarely get involved in in on, on in the other sites or into the projects directly. Normally, I make things worse when I get involved. <laughs> I have a I have a, a tendency to interfere. If I if it, well, when I when I do interfere, I'll make it worse. So the managers give me that look, like oh, get out of here. You don't. <laughs> you do what you're good at. <laughs> so I just go in and make sure they're all happy, and I have a bit of banter with them, and I'll 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 you know just make sure they're happy, you know, and that's all I'm interested in. Are they delivering the service? Um, it's it's strange. I very rarely. Uh, it, it sounds quite bad. I don't know the names of a lot of the staff, not because I'm ignorant or arrogant or anything. It's because I, I only get to know the staff names if they've done something wrong. When the manager comes and reports them to me, and I, that's when I. So if I don't know their names, that's a good thing. Um, and I do go and stop and talk to them, and I do know a lot of the names. But when when they come and go, I, I kind of I've got the worst memory on the planet. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but it's nice. They, they they get on with things, and they, uh, I let them run their organisation, their division. It's theirs. They've got to take ownership in it. The last thing any division wants is a CEO coming in and laying the law down. I will only come in if there's something drastically going wrong, which I can't see. <laughs> I'm entirely honest with you. I'm touch wood. The model that I use seems to work. That they all get on with it. Yeah. And I'm happy with that. Well, okay. You've got your trusted managers and staff in place yeah. running these services. So you've got all these employment opportunities. Are there any ways you've been able to help um, open up good opportunities for disabled people to get volunteering yeah. and employment experience? Absolutely. We, we encourage it. Um, we, a, a lot of our staff have some kind of impairment, whether it's hidden or quite visible. Um, a lot of people, will, uh, younger people, younger disabled people will join us through an apprentice scheme. Uh, and uh, in fact a lot of the people here started as apprentices in finance and they ended up staying with us uh, so I'm really chuffed that we've made a bit of a career for them some of them have left us and gone on to do stuff which whilst it's annoys you oh, we're just trying to stuff memory they've gone but they've gone on to do wonderful things elsewhere and you know that that's almost lifts you as well thinking well you've, you've played a part in someone's career development we're quite positive in that we've, we've, we do work with a lot of disabled people in trying to get them into employment uh, and volunteering. Uh, I started as a volunteer uh, and I, the, the staff always say it, um, when they're trying to recruit volunteers, they use me as an example. Well, he started as a volunteer and he ended up running the place. Yeah. Uh, it's, it shows that it can be done, so uh, we encourage it. Excellent. It's yeah. a great way for, like, say, volunteering and apprenticeships open up doors for people. Yeah. So even the business side serves some of your disability related outcomes as a charity. Then, and some of your objectives. It does. It does certainly does. And uh, so we're meeting a social need, and being able to charge for it, and using the profits to meet another social need. Yeah. <laughs> and that that's a winning formula for us, and I absolutely love it. And for me, on a personal level, it's it it gave me the confidence that I could run an organisation with a division with such uh, high financial accountability. Uh, this division is actually registered with the FCA um, and that, that's a big thing because you're heavily regulated then. Uh, and as I said earlier we've got around eight, 8 million pounds in accounts in our account which is a big responsibility. Um, so you know it, it, it gave me the confidence to start talking to other people even in my own life mm. I can I can advise other people about business and the mistakes we talked about earlier that I've made a lot of them were made here with this division as we grew uh, we, we, we sometimes you end up trying to cut corners as a manager or you're trying to uh, do things a long-winded way around mm. and and I learned them here and this division now is running very efficiently and that's and that I can copy that model and play, paste it everywhere, anywhere else in the organisation. So, um, so yeah, it's it, it, it's I'm really chuffed with this one. Uh, it a because it was something that it, it stemmed out of you know directly out of my head 
I'm, I'm going to take a lot of personal pride with that. Um, and, and, and then secondly, it's because it's been replicated elsewhere. Other organisations nationally have uh, similar successful payroll divisions charging disabled people for their, for their services, and it works. We were the f we, I'm chuffed we were one of the first in the country, if not the first. I'm pretty sure we were the first. So that entrepreneurial trailblazing streak that we've seen throughout obviously is makes a charity more sustainable, particularly at a time where the, the grants climate is, is, is drying up. Yeah. So do you see that providing a stable future for the charity's uh, services long term? Certainly. It plays a big, big role in, in the, f the future viability uh, and financial sustainability of that of the organization and that is something uh, 10 10 12 years ago um, I was probably won't say disliked but I wasn't very popular in the voluntary sector because I was preaching a lot about the need for charities to get off their backsides and start charging for their strengths and a lot of charities locally and regionally uh, fell out with me <laughs> saying you know you're you're going against against the grain of what we are supposed to be doing unfortunately they're no longer around uh, and I hate to, I won't say I'm sitting here smug but I'm sitting here disappointed because when they don't follow that model that we've adopted when they don't look at their own strengths and start charging for them their ego has overtaken the, the need and, and who suffers is the people that were desperately reliant on their services and that's what winds me up I'll be honest with you so disability direct strength is its ability to to just say no this is how much it costs if you want this <laughs> uh, when I first started doing disability equality training um, people expected me to do it for free because I worked for a charity and the minute we set it up under the new company called Nimbus, which is a separate entity, it wasn't Disability Direct anymore, they were happy to pay. And it just shows the, 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 the journey that the rest of the sectors need to take in terms of understanding the difference bet between a charging model uh, and the need. It's the same people delivering that training under a new company. But this, this the mentality of those organisations not understanding that mm -hmm. they that these companies charities need to charge to survive, and you're getting the same same people, the same training, the same outcome. Uh, it's just, and we shouldn't be we shouldn't be scared uh, as 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 a charity sector uh, in in charging for something that we're damn good at. Yeah. Uh, but it's an interesting model for the sector to learn from. Um, so many charities were reliant on grants as their sole source of income and of course that's changed yeah. and so many have fallen because of it so that income generation also really helped however it's a huge portfolio that you oversee um, are there ever any challenges or times where you feel nervous about the range of services that you're delivering nervous um, I'll be honest with you the day I stop I am nervous I'm always nervous the day I stop feeling nervous then there's something wrong that means either the, we've reached utopia uh, or you know I've lost my drive uh, and every project that is that is put to me by the service users or the staff I will say do it don't talk to me about it do it uh, and nine times out of ten those projects are viable L luckily this, the, the managers I've got around me they, they f follow the same kind of theory that I do, that just, just get on with it. Um, the, the, the challenges are there, there and um, unfortunately society, I've been here 25 years now, society has gone full circle. We went through a period that disabled people were starting to get equal rights, they were starting to get recognised uh, uh, in the workplace, um, but without getting political, some of the, some of the the, the more right-wing um, views of society now have targeted disabled people again. Um, they are seen as a burden on the system, some, some aspects. Uh, the way they are assessed for benefits and social care, it, um, it puts them at a massive disadvantage in getting what they should. I'm of the belief, and I'll say something controversially, I'm of the belief that disabled people uh, um, 
whether they are disabled through birth or through age, they should get free social care. Uh, you know, this, we are living in a world where we can, you know, we can um, fund silly things, but not fund our own um, vulnerable adults. Uh, and so I think we are in that society where we've come around to that that stage again, where disabled people need um, equal rights shouted out from the, the highest rooftops and there's not enough organisations anymore like Disability Direct to do that. It's interesting you mentioned that because there's quite a lot of complacency out there that people tend to think we've got equal opportunities these days, people think we've really moved forward but you seem to be describing a concern that we've gone backwards a bit. Absolutely. Do you think most people in society are, are aware of that problem? Disabled people have gone to the bottom of the, the ladder in terms of uh, their level of priority uh, by society, you know, the, a lot of money has been quite rightly spent on other areas within society um, in terms of getting people into work and, and um, the economy and, 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 and foreign policy, whatever. But locally, this, on, on a local level, right in your street, disabled people are suffering um, from huge drastic cuts to their, to their benefits, to their social care. And then with that comes uh, a self-awareness of disabled people feeling we are, you know, we are, uh, we are not seen as equal citizens. And then you start getting, you know, you just have to switch on the news, just have to look on social media, amount of reports there of disabled people either committing suicide through uh, or going to food banks uh, or, or it, it's annoying that we are living in this world. And that's where I say we've, we've taken a step back. I feel 25 years later, part of me feels I have failed. And I'm, then I'm thinking, well, I couldn't change the world myself. I've changed, I've tried to do what I can in Derby. But then, and then that makes you think there's such a long way to go. So, you know, we are in a society where, you know, disabled people are the, normally the first targets on any, on any kind of cuts to a service. And, you know, I, it breaks my heart that we're still we're, we're still in a society where that can that decision can be made quite easily. Well, you're describing a situation where a disability rights charity like Disability Direct is really vital, but probably quite a lot of people in society would be surprised that in 2019 we still really need disability rights advocacy because yeah. people tend to think things are all fair now. We've come a long way. Yeah. Why do you think people are complacent? They're complacent because. Um, I don't know, well, is complacency the right word? I think they are, it's almost as if it's the accepted norm that um, disabled people are treated this way. That's just accepted. We, we understand they're gonna be cuts to their benefits and their cuts to their social care, cuts to their standard of living. Um, and society has just said, well, yeah, yeah, that's happening, but there's much more important things going on. And my argument there is disability is one of those things that will affect everybody, whether it's directly um, or, or through old age or whether it's through birth or through a loved one. You could have a, a husband, wife, son, daughter or even grandchild or whatever who has an impairment. Uh, and uh, unless you're in that, social, that circle yourself directly, you don't fully understand it. And a lot of society thinks about disability as, well, it's happening over there, it's not affecting me. Mm. And until, and I see this day in, day out, when people are affected directly, that's when mm. they suddenly, the, the, their ears break up and think, what am I going to do about this? So do you think enough non-disabled people are paying attention and taking action to speak up about the breaches of disability rights and moving backwards on previous successes? Yeah. I don't think they are. I don't think there's enough of it going on. And a lot of that is about the lack of disability awareness, disability equality training within schools, uh, colleges, universities and the workplace. Um, when I started here, the Disability Discrimination Act had, had just come out. DDA 1995 and it was celebrations all across the disability movement that would here's a piece of legislation that's going to raise awareness and for the first four or five years I was heavily busy training loads of companies the employment service housing associations everyone left right said booked us for this training and as soon as budgets got cut the first thing that disappeared was equality based training 
and so you're now left with a section of society that is, is working or going to school or whatever that still doesn't understand I'm, I'm not talking about being political politically correct I'm talking about understanding how life affects disabled people mm. uh, so I think that's again why I said earlier on that we seem to have come full circle we are back to that stage where society needs to be educated mm -hmm. uh, so one of my missions is to keep continually throwing it in the face of society that disabled people are here what are you doing about it what are you doing about making your street your neighborhood your city better for disabled people well, we're going to be uh, having a look with you later on uh, on your local ward as council to find out more about what you get up to in that role thank yeah. you no, thank you